has been made. George Weah, the international soccer star and former senator, is now president of the Republic of Liberia. It's another beautiful day in Liberia, and the capital's beaches are looking better than ever. Markets like this are a crucial part of the Liberian economy. But average Liberians like the vendors you see around me are having an even harder time making ends meet this year. Liberia's newly elected president, George Weah, originally came from this neighborhood of West Point. Right now, it looks like I'm standing next to an old beat up shack. But this is actually what used to be one of Liberia's longest running, most respected media outlets. George Weah was supposed to speak tonight, giving his first nationwide address as the president elect of the Republic of Liberia. But as you can see, the crowd the thousands of people living in West Point could likely never afford getting a drink here, but they share the coastline of the Atlantic Ocean, the same ocean that is gradually pushing them out of their homes. Here is a copy of the court summons that the Temple of Justice issued to Liberia's National Elections Commission. The central bank is under fire again, this time for a shortage of Liberian dollars. On Saturday, lawyers for the More Than Me Academy board came from the U.S. to speak with parents about the school's sexual abuse scandal. I'm standing in Ducor Palace, what was once Liberia's most opulent hotel until warring factions ravaged the building by using it as a battleground during civil conflict. The Gaddafi regime made a pledge to renovate the building, but those plans were gutted back in 2011 when the regime was toppled. Today, Liberians wonder if the building will ever be fully restored as the beautiful hotel it once was. Patricia Titi Delani is among 162 women running for office this year in Liberia, a record high. Delani is seeking a seat in the House of Representatives. I don't have a degree for college, no. I'm a Machia woman and I'm a high school graduate. Women currently hold just nine of the 73 seats in Liberia's House of Representatives. The men are feel, have fears, feel us. So with the women, get some around, we want to do better than the men. The gender imbalance is particularly glaring considering that Liberia has been led by Africa's first female president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, for the past 12 years. Politics is a little, it's, it's scary for most women. You need a lot of money when you're, if you're gonna run for office, and it could be a little intimidating at times. Six women are on the ballot as vice presidential candidates, well, including Audrey and um, Smith Forbes. Women issues have been put on the back burner for so many years, and with women involved at the highest level, you know, brings their issues to the table as well. Issues like health care and gender-based violence have been front and center as the candidates court female voters, encouraging them to make their voices heard at the polls on October 10th. Monique John reporting for VOA News from Monrovia. Gift Asfala of West Point Township in Monrovia says she couldn't wait to get back to school. My children there are very good. You know, they are always willing to listen to us, willing to sacrifice for us. And there we get the best education from them. But last year, the 16-year-old dreaded going to class. Her school, More Than Me Academy, or MTM, was making international headlines for disturbing incidents of sexual molestation of students allegedly perpetrated by one of its founders. Gibbs says she was never abused by anyone at the school. Still, she, like many of her classmates, was seriously stigmatized because of the scandal. I can drive with people going to school, so every morning I have to walk to go to school by myself. At home, I don't have visitors. Everyone's like, I have AIDS or HIV since I attended More Than Me Academy. More Than Me Academy, located in Monrovia's bustling downtown area, was shut down last June because of its sexual abuse scandal. But since then, a small group of concerned Liberians have reopened the school through their own brand new organization called Hilltop. Hilltop Schools was born out of an auditor's suggestion for a new group of qualified Liberians to carry on MTM's mission. The organization's leaders include past staff members, volunteers, and even some of the school's most active parents. The vision of Hilltop is that every girl or every student receives a quality education. Every student also is healthy and students are safe. An unnamed donor is primarily funding MTM. The school has to pass a series of evaluations in order to receive its payment installments. In response to the school's past incidents of abuse, safeguards and protections are being put in place. 
Background checks of the staff are ongoing. Monique John for VOA News, Monrovia. Liberia is on the verge of electing its next president and House of Representatives. The election is expected to mark the country's first peaceful democratic handover of power since 1944. Twenty candidates are in the race to replace President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, while almost a thousand candidates are competing for 73 legislative seats. Poverty, the greatest problem right now in Liberia. We're looking for people who are educated, who are experienced, who can bring infrastructure development and also bring education to us in Liberia. One candidate, Charles Brumskeen, the president pro temp of the Senate under President Charles Taylor's administration, is on his third bid for president as well as George Wea, the current senator from Monterado and famous soccer star. Wea's immense popularity has brought out vast crowds at his various campaign events. Current Vice President Joseph Wakai is also running. The Unity Party candidate says he plans to continue policies from the Sirleaf administration. Wakai says being president will give him the authority to demonstrate his leadership skills. With a population of about 4 million people, Liberia has just over 2 million registered voters that will vote at the country's 5,000 polling places. Official results will be announced October 25th. Monique John reporting for VOA News from Monrovia.